Welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, Presidential Commission for Combating NCDs launched, media urged to be responsible in coverage of foreign companies, Surama Cup organizers encouraged to make football competition part of calendar activities, and Go Invest wraps up a positive year. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. And now for the details. Local public service takes a leap forward as 58 graduate from the Bartram Collins College of Public Service. Here is Zanil Williams. At today's graduation ceremony, President David Granger noted that from the first day of his administration, there was the realization that the public service needed a fresh burst of energy. It was then decided that public officers must be trained in order to enhance their performance. President Granger described the graduation as a landmark in the quest to having a professional public service body. To the state, it's a leap, a leap forward to provide an efficient and accessible public service to all of our citizens. The decision to accept, to establish the college was not hasty. It was not whimsical or fanciful. It was calculated and deliberate. A professional public service is essential to the efficient delivery of public services, such as public education, public health, public infrastructure, public security, public telecommunications, and of course, the public service itself. The Bertram Collins College of the Public Service was established under the direct order of the head of state. It is intended to be the driving force to transform Guyana's public service into a professional institute to serve every citizen with integrity, impartiality, objectivity, and identity. InfoHub caught up with some of the graduates who expressed their profound gratitude for the opportunity. Uh, when I first started, um, I wasn't really certain what I wanted to do, but I was aware that the government does offer opportunities for training and to basically better yourself. I would like to be a psychologist personally, but I was attached to the Ministry of Public Security. Uh, I can make my career work there because there are lots of servicemen and women that need counseling and actual guidance when it comes to uh, psychological issues. I was on work attachment at Public Service Ministry in 2015 and I was persuaded by my supervisor. but. That wasn't what I really wanted to do, but I just decided to try it since there was nothing else available. And it turned out to be successful. I was actually at home doing our thing, and so I saw the opportunity to further. It's not just a job, but they're actually training you, so it's a new experience. The 58 graduates underwent a one-year professional public servants course. Zanil Williams reporting for InfoHub. President David Granger has proposed a three-pronged approach aimed at the prevention and control of non-communicable diseases in Guyana. Delicia Haynes has the details. This new approach was outlined to the Minister of Public Health and Commissioners at the recent launch of the National Commission for the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases. This Presidential Commission for the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases in Guyana, I repeat, can succeed if it's based on better information, more initiatives on the part of all of society, and the implementation of campaigns aimed mainly at our children. I would like to see a nation of happier children and healthier communities. The Presidential Commission has a lot of work to do, as I said, in these three areas. And its work will be decisive in determining the extent to which we can enjoy the good life in Guyana. President Granger, who will also be the Commission's chairman, highlighted that due to cultural and lifestyle habits, approximately 70% of deaths locally are NCD-related. The public must be better informed about the need for lifestyle changes and choices in order to reduce risk. NCDs are not a joke, they're not fashion. They are a serious threat to life and leading cause 
of premature death. Ladies and gentlemen, NCDs are a pressing problem. And unfortunately, the burden falls mainly on the poor. Reducing risk factors, therefore, will not only save lives, but will save money. Meanwhile, Public Health Minister Valdo Lawrence briefly stated that the President's involvement in combating chronic diseases shows the effort to ensure that all persons in Guyana can enjoy a better quality of life. On this note, she added that her ministry will strengthen its collaboration with PAHO WHO while fostering ties with NGOs to intensify the campaign against NCDs locally. For Info Hub, Delicia Haynes. Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich has called on the local media to be responsible in their reportage related to foreign companies operating in Guyana. More from Stacey Carmichael. Minister Greenwich called on media operatives at a recent press conference to give foreign companies a fair chance, given their contribution to the nation's development. Using oil company ExxonMobil as an example, the minister cited negative reports by the media towards the company, which is technically and financially unrivaled around the world. Exxon happened to be in a particular place as regards availability of money, their properties and how they're developing elsewhere, and the state of the market, which happened to have been ideal for us. In 51 years, we have not managed to attract a single company of consequence other than Exxon to drill anywhere in this country, 51 years. And what is it you're saying to me? Before the company can pump two barrels of oil, you'll down the road, cussing them out, they're terrible. According to Minister Greenwich, sensational reporting against foreign companies is deterring other investors who, through their respective ambassadors, have expressed concerns to the Foreign Affairs Ministry. But where you're running a campaign every week saying the company isn't to be trusted, it can't do this, it wouldn't do that, it, this is irresponsible. And what I've seen is irresponsible. He reiterated the need for local media to be more responsible when providing information on foreign companies while holding them accountable to Guyana's laws governing their local operations. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. In our next report, Tiffany Rogers tells us that Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, returned home on Sunday for the Cerama Cup Finals. Minister Alicock encouraged the Cerama Cup organizers to increase their efforts to promote the activity since it can boost the community's development and contribute to the tourism product. Initiatives such as these, such as the Cerama Cup, the persons taking that first bold step, we support and we are going to continue to support as partners in development. The minister noted that the 2018 budget provides for the development of facilities to improve sports, particularly in the hinterland. The hinterland people who have the, the sort of skills that is needed to help to promote Guyana and put us forward into the international arena, getting to Olympics and stuff like that. Minister Alicock gave the opening and closing remarks at the finals of the male and female football matches. Piwomac Warriors won the female finals while the Tabatinga FC took the top spot for males. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. The Region 9 Administration and Conservation International Guyana signed a Memorandum of Cooperation that will see the two entities partnering to craft and implement the region's plan of action for regional development. Alexis Rodney has more. The Memorandum of Cooperation was signed at the Lethem Community Center ground in Region 9 on December 16. CI's Vice President David Singh said that the MOC complements the long-standing relationship between CI and the Rupununi residents. This really cements a long-standing relationship we have, with, have had with the people of the Rupununi. And it really cements I also, I believe, uh, this strong connection that the people of the Rupununi have to the ecosystems that make the Rupununi uh, so special. When you combine the, culture, the rich culture and heritage of the Rupununi region alongside its vast intact ecosystems, you have the very basis on which you can really have sustainable development in which the future of our country can be realized. Regional Chairman Brian Alicock explained that over the past year, CI has been providing technical assistance and financing regionally for stakeholders' consultations and involvement. We work 
from last year onto this year. And more so, we have actually included most of the projects that are requested by the villages in our, um, our budget for this 2018. But, you know, as it is, we could only give the villages what is needed. All 10 administrative regions are required to craft plans of action for regional development as mandated by President David Granger and the Ministry of the Communities. The PARDs will outline a 10-year developmental plan for the regions. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. Guyana Office for Investments Chief Executive Officer Owen Furway has expressed satisfaction with the agency's accomplishments for 2017. Here are details. I would say yes. I think we we had a board we had a board meeting last Friday, and that was expressed by the members. And I think it was asked to be put on record. Um, for myself, I I'm, I'm a bit of a different person. I set high standards, and I, I drive towards it. Um, yes, I am satisfied. Could there be more? Possibly yes. Um, this is an interactive process. This is an evolving process. It's also a government entity. At a press conference today, the CEO highlighted a number of accomplishments. In terms of agricultural land application processed, as I said earlier, as an agency, we now do the processing of applications for, for lands above 40 acres and anything that is to do with agriculture. We've processed more than 46 applications, in total 500 plus jobs, and in terms of acreage recommended, it's just over 99,000 acres recommended. Among the other accomplishments, the agency saw an increase in visitors to its office for advice. It has begun a self-compliance project implementation and participated in regional agricultural and commercial expositions race, among others. GoInvest is responsible for the investment and facilitation and promotion, policy advocacy and export promotion. Gabriella Patram for InfoHub. After six months of negotiations between the National Association of Agricultural, Commercial and Industrial Employees and the management of the Guyana Power and Light, a 6.5% salary increase, among other benefits, has been secured for GPL workers. Delicia joins us again. The salary increases will be retroactive to January 1, 2017. Apart from increases on the actual salaries, there are a number of other incentives that will boost staffers' finances paid. The company and the union has agreed to a 3% in scale increment and a 3.5% across the board, which is a separate, right? So it's equal to six, around 6.5 or something little more. There is also increase in meal allowance. Um, travel, no, not travel. Commuted allowance for meter readers, night shift premium, and other incentives like climbing poles, towers, and so on have increases. Also, overtime for working the sixth shift, and also an agreement for annual performance incentive. The Ministry of Social Protection's Chief Labor Officer Charles Ogle advised that negotiations for these increases could be more time effective and cater for an extended period. Don't let us sign one year agreement because as soon as you finish signing here now, it's time to sign or start, time to start the negotiation. You should look at two years or if not possible, three years. Most people have been going that way, two years, minimum three years, even five years, four years. Meanwhile, the Guyana Power and Light Chief Executive Officer Acting Renford Homer indicated that he was pleased with the manner in which the negotiations concluded. Despite the extended period and several disagreements, Homer said that the agreement to the salary increases as a result of professionalism and prudence that was exercised by both parties. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. In our final report, government officials over the weekend continued spreading Christmas cheer among Region 2, 4, and six villages. President David Granger on Saturday continued his toy distribution exercise at Lusignan East Coast Demerara with Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali. On Sunday during his visit to the Pomeroon Supernam region, President Granger described Christmas as a time of friendship and fellowship. He said it is for this reason that he has embarked on spreading Christmas cheer in the riverine areas which are not often visited. To look, to listen and to learn. And when we do those three things, we will be able to provide better services to you at Kabakuburi. What is important 
is the feeling of friendship that we have between us. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu and his wife Sita shared gifts among 115 children at their annual Christmas party in Firish, Cortland, Barbies. We are here because this is where my wife lived. She has come back here in memory of her father to be with the children every year. For you children, you are very, very lucky to grow in a time when you could come to a concert for you and you could look forward to some goodies. Mrs. Nagamutu handed over $50,000 to the missionaries of Charity Sisters, basketballs to the Firish Black Sharks team, cricket gear to the Cortland All Stars, and a water dispenser to the Wim Post office. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 24 7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.